Hey guys, in this video I want to show you how to scale from $100,000 per month to $1 million per month and specific strategies that we have used in our business, you know, so far to scale um, profitably. You can see here, so basically here, starting from zero to uh, over $1 million in November with this particular store. And I want to show you the whole structure on how exactly we do it so you guys can replicate that into your own uh, business. Right, so here's basically how we do it. General strategy, right? Because everything starts uh, from the strategy and uh, you know, over the years, like in our business, we've, we've done different models. So we've just identified the models that are the most beneficial, right? It gives you the most volume, the most like, kind of like the most revenue, the most, the most profit with the least amount of work, right? This is what we are optimizing for personally. I mean, there are business models that, you know, optimizing specifically for the, let's say for the volume, right? Like, you know, I know some people in, in the space that are doing like hundred million dollars or 150 per year, and they are having like huge, huge teams and they're just optimizing for volume. So do do a lot of volume, typical lower profit margins. In our model, we are optimizing for profit. So we optimize, okay, how can we generate as much revenue, as much profit as possible with as little investment of time and effort and, and as little team as possible, right? So the model that we choose personally is like either one product store, like a funnel or like niche stores where uh, we dial in one product and then over time we basically put other products as a store and kind of like make it like a niche store where the customer buys one product and then people buy other product and other product, other products. And I want to show you examples, like great examples of uh, those niche stores. Let me show you. So this is example of a great uh, niche store. So it's called Manta Sleep, and you can see these guys. For example, they're they had they started with what like a sleep mask, right? And now they've like introduced more of the like variations of these masks. They have like plenty of them, and now they also have the eye cups and hat straps and other uh, sleep aids. And you can see the bundles here. And so here you can see they have like the, the, the mission. And so pretty much like everything is focused around like sleep, right? Like, like very neat a niche store, but I mean, they're doing, they're doing like decent number considering, you know, the size of the size of, of their advertising and also how much, uh, so you can see 180 ads here running like pretty neat team, right? Like you can see three, four, five, six six people here, right? Just focusing on one niche. This is the advantage of focusing on a niche because it's kind of like keeps your, uh, you can do a lot of, I mean, a lot, like multiple six figures, seven figures, multiple seven figures in volume per month with very small uh, team and very small overhead. And the same here, you can see they're, advertising, they're selling on Amazon, right? So this is like cheaper competitors. So they're selling, you can see very similar, right? But they're selling at a more expensive, price point and still doing pretty well. So you can see 4,500 reviews here and expanding multi-channel, right? So they're doing Amazon, they're doing direct on their website and scaling up pretty nicely here. So that's basically the model, right? Like we're focusing on these like small neat stores that they're doing, you know, from few million a year to like eight figures per year, right? So that's uh, the model we are pursuing because we have found that model to be the most beneficial with the least amount of headaches and work right involved and we are focusing on problem solving products so each store each product is you know solving some problem either it's with with sleep either it's with you know with health with fitness with focusing on those problems that are more like evergreen that don't go anywhere right it's just like how people solve them changes over time so for example fitness right like how how you can get into like good shape i mean you can have the device to exercise at home or you can use a Peloton, the app, and that comes with this, um, you know, the the bicycle, right, that you put in home, and like you're riding that. Or you can have the treadmill, right? There are many different ways to solve that particular problem, like uh, you know, getting fit and also staying fit. But then, uh, you know, there are like many businesses, hundreds of million dollars businesses, billion dollar businesses that are within that niche that's solving that same one problem: how to get people to be fit.
right? And our approach is improving uh, products and quality over time, right? So what a lot of people do is that they would try to sell something, they, they would sell something, but then they would never make improvements to the product, to the packaging, to the experience that customer has. That's why their business is always vulnerable, right? That's why they have a lot of banned ad accounts. That's why they have a lot of the uh, page issues, uh, page feedback score issues. That's why they have DBM issues, banned profiles. So we are improving our stuff over time. And that's why we get you know higher ratio than uh, most people of repeat customers. That's why we we have you know more sustainable business, right, and more profitable business as well. Uh, so our strategy is to build a portfolio of interconnected brands. So for example, if we can upsell items from one niche store from customers, and we can create lookalikes and we can sell other items, right? We can share those within you know between stores. Then we have higher overall lifetime value and we have a lower customer acquisition costs, right? This is our strategy. And overall, this like position to exit. I mean, we're making some adjustments. We've made some mistakes in that. You know, a lot of businesses, you know, when we got the valuation of, of our business, it wasn't that good. So we had to readjust certain things. So now it's positioned to exit. And this is basically what we're working on and, and it works pretty well. So this is the general strategy, guys. There are certain things that need to be in place, like infrastructure, like ad accounts, BM pages. I created, like you can see on my channel, you should, you should find another video on that particular topic on how to streamline that part and how to have, you know, the ad accounts and BMs and pages streamlined and not rely. Because even if you do everything properly, even if you do everything like correctly, then Facebook can still shut you down, right? And that is very painful, very expensive experience because if you cannot run your ads for like a few days, and you still have all of the, you know, overhead with, uh, with team members, with, you know, with suppliers, with all of those things, right? And you cannot run your business properly, then kind of like adds up and costs you a lot. So it's, it's good to have DBMs and ad accounts and pages, like all of those things uh, in place. And I have this, the redundancy, right? You always want to think, so if this thing goes wrong, then what can be done to eliminate that, right? And what if, if this team member, for example, something happens to that team member, right? Like if boss hits, you know, you or like your team member, like what happens in that case? Who can do that particular part of the uh, project, part of the job that that team member needs to do or you need to do? Agents and suppliers, we have few, so uh, we are not relying on just one. We always want to have the backup. So let's say one supplier cannot fulfill or has maybe too many orders to fulfill, then we just send them to another supplier. So we constantly kind of like managing that, making sure that we have the backup. Again, it comes down to redundancy. You want to have, if something goes wrong, then uh, you have another thing that would replicate and would replace what just went wrong. And then the multi-channel, right? So multi-channel, I think people kind of like overcomplicating that because, you know, they try to focus on too many channels at the same time. Whereas like we focus on one channel on each store at least to the point where it gets at least $100,000 per month in sales. And then only after that, we start adding other channels. Like we would add retargeting on Pinterest, we would add retargeting on Google, we would add retargeting on Bing, and we would have all of these channels interconnected. The same goes with email marketing. So we work with an agency to help us uh, get as much as possible from the email marketing on the back end of it, right? So then we, uh, again, we increase the lifetime value, we increase the average short value, we increase the value per customer. So then we are more profitable overall as a business, but you always want to have the backups for everything, right? Like agent suppliers, you want to have two or three that, you know, in case something happens to one, you always have another one to, to help out and fulfill all of the orders on time. Team structure. So team structure will be predicated on the business model. For example, we have some of our clients in e-commerce scaling secrets program that basically help to scale from like seven figures to like eight figures. If you're interested, by the way, in if you're like advanced e-commerce entrepreneur, intermediate, advanced, you're doing at least, you know, 30, 50, 100,000 dollars per month, you want to scale farther, then there should be a link uh, in the comments. We also have the free community in case you're interested to join. If you're doing over 1,000 hours per day, it's free community, but it's it's very high level and it has a lot of great content. And I answer your questions live every week in that community. There should be a link as well in the comments. The team structure will be predicated on the business model. What I mean by that is like, let's say if you run like a general store, we have some clients that do that general stores in Europe, then you'll have a lot of the you know testing of the products, right? You'll have to test many, many products, right? And that means, you know, you probably need a person who specifically researches products. You will need a person who tests the products. You'll need a person who scales the products. So 
it's pretty much like you'll have a team, right? That's why I don't like that model in particular because it requires your team to be kind of like bulky. Like I don't, I mean, it's you can still make it work, and we have clients that are doing extremely well with that model. But I personally don't like that. I like simplicity, and I like to make more with less. So team structure in that particular case will be, you know, the product uh, researcher, product tester, product scaler. Like you have a few people, and then. For each of the stores, you, you need more, and then you need to test like three, five, ten products per day. So uh, just to get like one of them to 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 resonate and and uh, to be a winning product. So that model uh, will require obviously more complexity. Our model is simpler because we don't have as much complexity, and it can be run like by a pretty like lean team. Pretty like lean team of like five, six people can do like one million dollars per month. So that's the benefit of this particular um, model, right? Like the niche stores, right? And you're focusing on the same customers, all the questions pretty much the same. We can improve the product quality over time. Try to improve the product quality if you have like 50 products that you're selling, so it's pretty difficult. And so team structure overall, you know, some people are focused like, hey, I wanna have like as big team as possible. For us, like we wanna have a team as little as possible. We prefer to pay our team members more, uh, you know, those that kind of like do more work, like one person can replace, let's say five people, then I would definitely go after that one person than having like a lot of people communicate with each other, like communication breaks, Slack channels, like overwhelmed. And so that's not what we're looking to do. We're looking to do as little as possible. And what we do is basically we consolidate the responsibility. So for example, if like one person can do the product testing and product, like let's say scaling, then that's what we can do, right? And we don't need that many product tests with this particular model. And we always test on warm lists. We test with retargeting, we test with email list, we test with SMS. So this is how we're testing products. And so we are consolidating basically more responsibilities into one person because then it doesn't require a lot of, you know, communication between people, right? So one person can just simply get it done and wouldn't have to go like back and forth or send it to this person, then this person misses it or this person is another time zone and this person replies tomorrow and then like they do something, they, they reply tomorrow to this person, then it's time for this person that <laughs> this person replies next day and then it's fucking broken. So this is not what we want to do. And this is not, you know, after doing a lot of these different models, uh, this is purely like, at least not for me, you know, if you're looking to do like very like huge volume and have a lot of kind of like people and complexity, then it might be the model for you. But definitely was not the model for our business. Because it causes a lot of stress, a lot of broken communication. That's not what we're looking to do. Remote versus in office. So in the office, we have we have some key employees, team members. Most of our you know team members are remote, right? So this is how we've structured it. If you can do in office, um, we we used to have a period in time where uh, we had our key team members in office, uh, you know, pretty like efficient, but it's also, you know, you can do remote, right? Remote is like pretty much how everyone is functioning. Now uh, you don't have to have an office, but definitely like an office simplifies the communication, but you can do remote as well. And media buyer evolution. So this is very important because, you know, a lot of people, when they think about media buyer, they think like, okay, this is the person that like knows how to do Facebook ads. This is the person who knows how to like set up targeting or choose the targeting. And it's fucking not because, you know, media buyer, if, if that's like a smart person, then that person would understand a lot of moving parts of the business, right? That person would understand the conversion. That person would understand the, obviously, the targeting, all of the moving parts. That person would understand the creative. That person would understand the fulfillment, the feedback score, you know, so I would understand all of the moving parts of the business. So then it can communicate directly um, with video editor. Hey, we need this type of creative done, like boom, boom, boom. Right, then can communicate with designer. We need this type of banners done, boom, 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 right? So can communicate with copyright. Okay, we need this type of copy. This is example, this is what we need to achieve. And so this person would like media buyer would become like a project manager for the whole uh, for the whole that unit, right? So unit can be like a store or a funnel and also can manage like several of them at the same time. So this is the structure. And so media buyer would evolve into that position. And obviously for that, they need to have the managerial kind of like capabilities, like leadership capabilities. So they need to evolve and manage other people, collaborate with other people to achieve certain result, right? And then we compensate them, you know, based on the performance, based on the profit that they generate uh, for the business. And that's basically how it's structured, how we found it to be the most efficient. Again, as little amount of people and is consolidating this responsibility. So then there's no like three layers of like, of like in big corporations, which are like, they can afford because they have like billions of dollars to waste. 
but you don't have, right? And so I don't have. And so we cannot have like three layers of like, hey, as this person, this person as this person, this person as this for three layers of fucking management, it cannot happen like that, right? It should be like straight communication. Like someone is constantly accountable for getting stuff done, basically would simplify your whole business and will make it streamlined and scalable cash flow. So this is overlooked part of the business. The good thing about what we do is that self-funded profitable growth. So it's basically funds itself. And then we basically fund the business from its own like profit, right? And we, we fund that profit and business at the end is funding itself. So the good thing about what we do is like we, we drop shipping, right? So we're still operating for a drop shipping model, but with good customer experience, right? So our suppliers still send the orders when they're ready. We have the minimum order quantities we have to do because we, we do some of the customizations to the product and then uh, some of the, the custom packaging. But then still, it's, um, you know, cash flow is not a huge concern for us at least. And at this point, we have big reserves that we could use. Obviously, if you do like some type of like e-commerce and then you work like on Amazon and then you work on three different channels and then you have 50 different SKUs, Right, then obviously your cash flow will be very tight. Then you need to get the financing, the funding. We have some partners that, that do that, you know, that could help you with funding and financing, but then it's not simply the business model that we have found for us to be the best, right? So we focusing on more on more profitable business model and that obviously limits our skill, right? Like, so for example, if we wanna have like 30% profit, like 35% profit at the end of the year with the business, then obviously, you know, we wouldn't like scale as hard as we could, right? And so, so on one side, it's a loss, right? So we would we don't do let's say nine figures uh, with the business, right? But then you know we do multiple eight figures, but then it's those eight figures that are more profitable at the end of the day. So that's basically the the trade off, right? And that's up to the business owners, up to you if you're managing the business. Um, to kind of decide what, which model you want to pursue and what you want to focus on. Do you want to focus on volume? Like, for example, most of the businesses just focusing on volume on the market share, then they are unprofitable many years. Like Amazon was unprofitable for like how many years? Like 10, 15 years, probably 20. And so that is kind of like what you what you decide to do. Probably at some point, like we we'll just decide to, to build something like extremely like massive. And for that, it will just, you know, it will be just like pure reinvestment, everything we can into it, and then over leveraging, you know, with all of the capital we can ha- we can have access to, right? At this point, we're focused more on um, shorter term profit, like one year, two years, than on that very high scale, right? And so definitely the mindset would change, right? Like obviously, if you're looking for scale, then everything, you just go all in, right? And those businesses typically are not profitable. Those businesses might make losses for a few years. Those businesses might need uh, funding and might need, you know, other like venture capital or private equity. But uh, we are looking on, uh, we're looking for the profitability in the first place. That's trade-off that we've chosen to do, you know, doesn't allow us to, to, to do like nine figures. It, it's just a matter of choice, obviously. But at this point, you know, we have certain priorities that we, certain benchmarks that we have to we want to, we don't have to, but we want to achieve. And that's uh, basically predicates the whole business. And uh, credit card points, that's a bonus, right? So when we travel, we travel for free. If you are one of the like European countries that might be like less accessible to you, if you're in like United States, there are plenty of options. We're using, I believe the American Express, gold and platinum. And we're using also Bank of America uh, cash, cash back. So we are using those. So when we travel, it's pretty much for free. We could travel for a long, long time. Uh, we haven't had access to that in Europe. Europe is many, many years behind that. Uh, like United States, so developed in that respect with different cars, with different options, specifically designed for you to like spend a lot of money. If you spend a lot of money, then you settle your, uh, your credit. Then you can do a lot of points. You can travel for free. You can rent cars for free. You can do a lot of stuff. Right, so that's a bonus. If you're doing spending a lot, then you definitely should inquire about that. And if you already using that, then awesome. We basically share ideas about that in, inside of our private community. We have a community for eight figure sellers inside of our mentorship program. Uh, so we share ideas kind of like what works uh, with credit cards. So that's it guys. This is basically the, the framework that we've used to basically build a portfolio of um, commerce stores, like niche stores. This is not our store, by the way, but this is the model, right? I like this model the most. I like this model a lot because it's kind of like 
let's say someone bought the sleep mask and you can sell them the blue light glasses then you can sell these people the weighted blankets and like you can sell them a lot of stuff right to the same customer as long as had like good experience i love this model i think that's a perfect business model and the fact that here for example right it does not have a lot of skews right so for example if you had this product here and you had like let's say five ten different skews Right, you have like like five different colors, and it's five SKUs, and you have to buy the stock for all, so like all five of them, right? So it's very, it's much different, right? Yeah, it will come down to that cash flow because you will need to buy like say five thousand units of each of those minimum order quantity. Then you have twenty five thousand, right? So or I mean, you might have like thousand of each, but then it will limit. Let's say one sells out, and others like are not selling as much, right? So then again, it's um, it will be pretty good on that. So our model is what we've found to be the best for us for our business specifically and uh hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys will take uh, you know some insights and implement them into your own business um, but this is how we built our uh, eight figure business and um, i believe you can do the same and scale scale from like seven to eight figures from 100k per month to one million dollars per month with this particular model with those insights so Thank you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm curious to hear what you, if, if you had maybe, maybe I missed something. Maybe you have some specific questions. Just shoot them in the comments and um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe to my channel, like this video. And if you're looking for help, again, scaling your business from like seven to eight figures, then should be a link below in the comments and we'll see how we can help you out. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next video.